In 1968, during a period called the Prague Spring, Alexander Dubček, the newly elected leader of Czechoslovakia, enacted pro-democracy reforms that loosened state control and expanded individual rights, giving hope to citizens and angering the Soviet Union. On the night of the 20th to the 21st of August 1968, five wars of packed nations, the Soviet Union, Bulgaria, Hungary, East Germany and Poland, invaded Czechoslovakia. The Operation Danube, as the invasion was officially known, successfully stopped Alexander Dubček's Prague Spring liberalization reforms and strengthened the authority of the authoritarian wing within the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia. In Czechoslovakia, the process of destalinization had begun under Antonin Novotny in the late 1950s and early 1960s, but had progressed more slowly than in most other states of the Eastern Bloc. In the early 1960s, Czechoslovakia underwent an economic downturn. The Soviet model of industrialization applied poorly to Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia was already quite industrialized before World War II and the Soviet model mainly took into account less developed economies. Novotny's attempt at restructuring the economy, the 1965 new economic model, spurred increased demand for political reform as well. Novotny invited the Secretary General of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, Leonid Brezhnev, to Prague in December 1967, seeking support. But Brezhnev was surprised at the extent of the opposition to Novotny and thus supported his removal as Czechoslovakia's leader. Dubček replaced Novotny as first secretary on the 5th of January 1968. On the 22nd of March 1968, Novotny resigned his presidency and was replaced by Ludwig Svoboda, who later gave consent to the reforms. In April, Dubček launched an action program of liberalizations which included increasing freedom of the press, freedom of speech and freedom of movement, with economic emphasis on consumer goods and the possibility of a multi-party government. It would limit the power of the secret police and provide for the federalization of Czechoslovakia into two equal nations. The program also covered foreign policy, including both the maintenance of good relations with Western countries and cooperation with the Soviet Union and other Eastern Bloc nations. It spoke of a 10-year transition through which democratic elections will be made possible and the new form of democratic socialism would replace the status quo. Although it was stipulated that reform must proceed under Communist Party direction, popular pressure mounted to implement reforms immediately. Radical elements became more vocal. Anti-Soviet polemics appeared in the press after the formal abolishment of censorship on the 26th of June 1968, as Social Democrats began to form a separate party and new unaffiliated political clubs were created. Party conservatives urged repressive measures, but Dubček recommended moderation and re-emphasized the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia leadership. At the presidium of the Communist Party of Czechoslovakia in April, Dubček announced a political program of socialism with a human face. In May, he announced that the 14th Party Congress would convene in an early session on the 9th of September. The Congress would incorporate the action program into the party statutes, draft a federalization law and elect a new central committee. The Soviet leadership at first tried to stop or limit the impact of Dubček's initiatives through a series of negotiations. Czechoslovakia and the Soviet Union agreed to bilateral talks to be held in July 1968 at Cherna nad Tiso near the Slovak-Soviet border. The Communist Party of Czechoslovakia delegates reaffirmed their loyalty to the Warsaw Pact and promised to curb anti-socialist tendencies, prevent the revival of the Czechoslovak Social Democratic Party and control the press by the reimposition of a higher level of censorship. In return, the USSR agreed to withdraw their troops, still stationed in Czechoslovakia since the June 1968 maneuvers, and permit the 9th of September Party Congress. As these talks proved unsatisfactory, the USSR began to consider a military alternative. 
The Soviet Union's policy of forcing the socialist governments of its satellite states to subordinate their national interests to those of the Eastern Bloc through military force if needed became known as the Brezhnev Doctrine. A small group of pro-Moscow hardliners in the Czechoslovak Communist Party led by Vasil Bilak wrote two letters requesting urgent assistance from the Soviet Union to counter the imminent counter-revolution in Czechoslovakia. The 16th to the 17th of August Soviet Politburo meeting unanimously passed a resolution to provide help to the Communist Party and people of Czechoslovakia through military force. At approximately 11 pm on the 20th of August 1968, Eastern Bloc armies from four Warsaw Pact countries, the Soviet Union, Bulgaria, Poland and Hungary invaded Czechoslovakia. That night, 250,000 Warsaw Pact troops and 2,000 tanks entered the country. Total number of invading troops eventually reached 500,000. Romania did not take part in the invasion, nor did Albania, which subsequently withdrew from the Warsaw Pact over the matter. Participation of the German Democratic Republic was cancelled just hours before the invasion. The decision for the non-participation of the East German Army in the invasion was indeed made on short notice by Brezhnev, following requests by high-ranking Czechoslovak opponents of Dubček, who feared of much larger Czechoslovak resistance if German troops were present on Czechoslovak territory due to the previous Czech experience with German occupation of Czechoslovakia. The invasion was well planned and coordinated. Simultaneously with the border crossing by ground forces, a Soviet airborne division captured Prague Václav Havel airport at the time called Ruzinia International Airport in the early hours of the invasion. It began with a special flight from Moscow, which carried more than 100 plainclothes agents. They quickly secured the airport and prepared the way for the huge forthcoming airlift in which Antonov 12 transport aircraft began arriving and unloading Soviet airborne troops equipped with artillery and light tanks. As the operation at the airport continued, Columns of tanks and motorized rifle troops headed toward Prague and other major centers, meeting no resistance. Alexander Dubček called upon his people not to resist. He was arrested and taken to Moscow, along with several of his colleagues. Dubček and most of the reformers were returned to Prague on the 27th of August, and Dubček retained his post as the party's first secretary until he was forced to resign in April 1969 following the Czechoslovak hockey riots. Popular opposition was expressed in numerous spontaneous acts of non-violent resistance. In Prague and other cities throughout the Republic, Czechs and Slovaks greeted wars of packed soldiers with arguments and reproaches. Every form of assistance, including the provision of food and water, was denied to the invaders. Signs, placards and graffiti drawn on walls and pavements denounced the invaders the Soviet leaders and suspected collaborationists. Pictures of Dubček and Svoboda appeared in the streets. Citizens gave wrong directions to soldiers and even removed street signs except for those giving the direction back to Moscow. The generalized resistance caused the Soviet Union to abandon its original plan to oust the first secretary. It was agreed that Dubček would remain in office, but he was no longer free to pursue liberalization as he had before the invasion. The invasion was followed by a wave of emigration, largely of highly qualified people, unseen before and stopped shortly after, 70,000 immediately and 300,000 in total. Western countries allowed these people to immigrate without complications. Finally, on the 17th of April 1969, Dubček was replaced as first secretary by Gustav Husak and the period of normalization began. Pressure from the Soviet Union pushed politicians to either switch loyalties or simply give up. In fact, the very group that voted for Dubček and put the reforms in place were mostly the same people who cancelled the program and replaced Dubček with Husak. Husak reversed Dubček's reforms, purged the party of its liberal members and dismissed the professional and intellectual elites who openly expressed disagreement with the political turnaround from public offices and jobs. By May 1971, Husak could report to the delegates attending the officially sanctioned 14th Party Congress 
that the process of normalization had been completed satisfactorily and that Czechoslovakia was ready to proceed toward higher forms of socialism. Dubček was later sent as ambassador to Turkey in 1969-1970 in the hope that he will defect to the West, which however did not occur. In 1970 he was expelled from the Communist Party, becoming an employee in the Forestry Service in Slovakia. 